Hey everybody, and welcome to the next map that I'm going to play, which is Geonosis Freight Dock, a very classic map, and in my opinion, one of the uh, best balanced and polished maps there is. I have reviewed this both on the Kanoa channel, but also even on the Looping Real Gaming channel, back when uh, me and Ryan did uh, some uh, a short period of Battlefront reviews. And the reason why this is so good is its approach for Geonosis is very different. Where most maps uh, offer this grand scale combat in the open red desert, this goes for an approach that in my opinion uh, feels like a Halo multiplayer game. It is basically an arena map, an arena shooter. Uh, very small in scale but super well balanced, super polished, everything is very coherent both aesthetically but also gameplay wise and it offers both conquest but also two-way capture the flag and is a perfect map to play the capture the flag mode on. You can see that it goes for a very traditional style and layout but again it, it, it just is so well done that gameplay wise it is a lot of fun even though it is a compact map it is not um, cramped uh, in any way shape or form uh, and even has the possibility of some vehicular combat as you can see I do remember that I might have been worried if the heroes might turn off the balance I mean Heroes are so overpowered with their jump. Well, actually, there's a ceiling there. But, you know, you can traverse this map very quickly. And then maybe throw off the balance. I will actually not partake currently in the capture of command, po uh, command posts. Because, of course, having only two command posts does mean that a match can be over quite quickly. You could see that the droids earlier went up the ramp trying to take our command post, so it is a map that is very well playable with AI. Actually see how this is. Yep. It's also one of those maps that in terms of size is perfect to play in regular conquest mode, not XL. And what made me realize you know how good this is is, is um, the industrial factor also is one reason why it for example reminds me of uh, Halo there are maps that aesthetically look like this in Halo and I'm trying to think of other maps that try to have the same approach um, I know for example that Yavin 4 is a popular setting to have arena fighting style maps as well but I think the approach is very different. The approach there is to just have a lot of objects uh, from the ruins and temples on Yavin 4 and then have a very close quarter combat match there. And we have, for example, seen... We have seen maps that are literally called Arena Battle. Now I actually do have to... Okay, here we go. Now I do actually have to take some countermeasures. But yeah, there have been maps that are literally called uh, Arena Battle. And yet, even though they're called Arena Battle, they do not feel as much as an arena shooter as this one. And that is a compliment to this. And the cool thing is that everything has uh, a function and everything works with a purpose here. All the turrets you see here really work well. They're in perfect position to where you can cover multiple spawn points, yet you are vulnerable enough to where if you do that, you're of course going to be a static unit and you're going to be shot quite easily unless someone covers you. Now that might seem um, pretty redundant and something that counts for all maps, so that's not necessarily the case. In some maps, especially the open, more uh, open world ones, you have a lot of turrets that don't necessarily have a function. That are, for example, 
obscured by some cover or an object. Let's see, am I going to capture this? No. No, they can have it back. And again, even the AAT. Oh, they have two AATs. Huh. Maybe one slight then a uh, bit of like improvement that this could make is if if the clones only have an ATRT, uh, in my opinion, that doesn't really stack up against two AATs. So maybe having two TX-130s might have been better there. I actually thought that there was only one AAT in the beginning, and it almost kind of felt again it, to come back to Halo. It felt like the one warthog in the middle of the map. I mean, again, it is wide enough. You can see that the AI is very comfortable using it. It's not getting stuck behind cover or objects. And it's a funny thing too, isn't it? Because it's, it's again, a, uh, a issue of balance where if you're one of the AI, you can decide to get to the bottom floor and head to another outpost via one of these ramps. It's basically shorter because it's, it's a straight line. Uh, you don't go through, you know, some of the, the ramps there. But, uh, or the boardwalks. But, if you do that, you risk getting shot very easily by some of the vehicles. And it's just really great. Not only Halo has those types of map, Unreal has some of those maps as well. Where every bit of intent is made in the points of the map. For example, if you want to take the quickest route towards the enemy base, you're going to be entirely in the open, meaning you're very much an easy target for snipers or other units defending the base. Whereas if you go to a different route that's longer, you will go through a cave system uh, which will protect you unless, of course, uh, another enemy is within that cave system. So you will actually have a direct confrontation, but you'll be safe from snipers almost all the way through. It's that risk-reward system that's very fun and very engaging to play. You can also see very much uh, well balanced. I'm actually going to give them the spawn point. And again, matches could last a lot quicker than that I'm now letting up because, again, I don't necessarily want this to be over as so I'm still doing the review. But matches like this can probably easily take only five minutes, which is something, of course, that I have criticized in the past, where if you want short, you know, shorter missions, but that's very obviously the approach here. It's bit-sized matches. And if you actually do want a longer match, you just set up rules for a longer two-way capture flag game. I do actually wonder if a lot of people still play capture flag. Back during Halo 2, I remember the new Mombasa map was very popular for that game mode. Even though nowadays, people don't really seem to play that mode anymore. And that was a different style too. That was not a two-way capture flag like this map supports, but that was a one-way capture flag. And I actually think that's very interesting because that again has that uh, attack and defend dynamic of gameplay for both teams. I'm actually, I want to engage, yeah, exactly, I want to engage with one of these, I want to actually test it out. So yeah, you can see how underpowered I am against one of those AATs. So again, my comment about the TX-130 still stands. Alright, you know. Interesting thing too is, it's actually quite difficult for the AI I now see to capture all four command posts 
because it is still there's still enough distance between them to where all of the AI will spawn at that one final point to keep the defense up. Another command post for the Republic. It's so good. It's so good. Oh, we got we got some glitchiness going on with the lightsaber though. Look at that. That's a little strange. First time seeing that. And again, I'm always a big fan of um, seeing different types of approaches on maps that we have seen so many times. I mean, I've done a lot of Geonosis maps actually on this channel. And eight times out of ten, uh, you know, you can quite compare them to each other in what they're trying to go for. Yet this one goes for something completely different. You know, another map that comes to mind that does something different is the Geonosis Jedi Arena. And again, I am very curious if there are other maps that try to do the same thing as this one. If you do know one, please let me know in the comments down below. It's also not frantic enough. You know what? One thing that I really have... Um, that I dislike about a lot of shooters nowadays including also the EA Star Wars Battlefront games, is that usually your lifespan in a match, you know, until you respawn, is very short. Everything needs to be, like, quick, frantic, chaotic, and even though I do love the chaos of, like, epic battles, right? Like, large-scale battles. Um, the fact that in this game you actually do get to live a little bit longer before you die and respawn really adds to the experience. And I know I cannot really say that for the character that I'm playing now because I'm playing a hero character. But I'm talking about... Um, I mean this in the sense of a regular clone character. Or a regular infantry character. Since there are only 23 left, I will not actually start to round them up. Work towards an ending. clean it up. Again, you can see we're so... Oh, God. I killed one guy. We're so near each other, too, in terms of number of reinforcements. It's just... It's really good. Again, um, it's basically a perfect map. Uh, you know, even without the TX-130s that I talked about, it's still just very fun to play. Um, again, it's just... If you review, you try to find things to improve or find things to critique, and some of them can be like super, super small that really don't take anything away from the fun or experience of the map. That's another command post under Republic control. They're losing reinforcements. I got two Keep left. So I will actually start to do the end chat. So guys, you can find the link to this map in the description down below. I do assume that a lot of you have already played this or have experienced with this map because it's a very famous one uh, and with good reason. Don't forget to let me know any recommendations or requests on mods or maps you want me to play on the channel. Hostile reinforcements are being depleted. Where's that final one? Where's the final one? The there, up in the Enemy corner northeast. Somewhere here. Aha! Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.